Hi everybody. So this is something that I've kind of thought about doing in the past, but now that I am not teaching any live yoga classes, I have quite a bit of time to, um, I don't know, try new things. Today I'm going to be reading to you this book called The Yamas and Niyamas, Exploring Yoga's Ethical Practice by the amazing Deborah Adele. This book is very popular in the yoga community. A lot of my yoga friends have read this, and it's one of the books that we turn to. You know, it's just one of those that we turn back to and reopen every once in a while. If you're unaware of the full yoga practice, the yoga postures are actually only one part of an eight-part path of the yoga um, practice, the yoga lifestyle. Deborah does a way better job at explaining all of that than I do, so um, we'll dive into this book. But before we get started, I just kind of want to give a little, um, you know, why I'm choosing to do this. Uh, personally, I love being read to. Um, I have an app called the Insight Timer, and it's a meditation app. And um, I listen to recordings of guided meditations, but also people reading simple stories and things like that. Um, it's very soothing for me, and I thought maybe I could help um, offer that for you as well. Maybe you can find this very relaxing, and, um, and it's great as well if you're really interested in exploring deeper into the yoga teachings and philosophies. Um, I will leave a link to purchase this book through Amazon. Um, I don't think it was that much for me. I didn't look up the price, but I think it's a rather affordable book and um, it'd be great to add to your, your collection if you're really interested in learning more. So anyway, we'll get started. I'm only going to read a little bit a day. And today, I'll be starting on page 15. And then I'll do chapter one next time. If at any time you have thoughts that arise or something you would kind of like to discuss, I'm always open to that. You can leave a comment in the comment section. But yeah, we'll get started. So Deborah says, what are the yamas and niyamas? The yamas and niyamas are foundational to all yogic thought. Yoga is a sophisticated system that extends far beyond doing yoga postures. It is literally a way of living. Yoga is designed to bring you more and more awareness of not only your body, but also your thoughts. The teachings are a practical step-by-step -step methodology that brings understanding to your experiences while at the same time pointing the way to the next experience. They are like a detailed map telling you where you are and how to look for the next landmark. They facilitate taking ownership of your life and directing it toward the fulfillment that you seek. The yamas and niyamas may be thought of as guidelines, tenets, ethical disciplines, precepts, or restraints and observances. I often think of them as jewels because they are the rare gems of wisdom that give direction to a well-lived and joyful life. In yogic philosophy, these jewels sit as the first two limbs of the Eightfold Path. The first five jewels are referred to as yamas a Sanskrit word which translates literally into the word restraints and includes nonviolence, truthfulness, non-stealing, non-excess, and non-possessiveness. The last five jewels are referred to as the niyamas or observances and include purity, contentment, self-discipline, self-study, and surrender. Many guides to ethical conduct may leave us feeling overwhelmed with concepts or boxed in by rule sets. Yoga's guidelines do not limit us from living life, 
but rather they begin to open life up to us more and more fully, and they flow easily into one another in ways that are practical and easy to grasp. Nonviolence, the first jewel, sits as the foundation to the other guidelines, which in turn enhance the meaning and flesh out the richness of nonviolence. Nonviolence is a stance of right relationship with others and with self that is neither self-sacrifice nor self-aggrandizement. This tenet guides us to live together, share the goods, and do what we want without causing harm to others or ourselves. Truthfulness. The second jewel is partnered with nonviolence. The marriage of these two guidelines creates a powerful dance between two singing, seeming opposites. We can appreciate this statement when we begin to practice speaking our truth without causing harm to others. As partners, truthfulness keeps nonviolence from being a wimpy cop out, while nonviolence keeps truthfulness from being a brutal weapon. When they are dancing perfectly together, they create a spectacular sight. Their union is nothing short of profound love in its fullest expression, and when there is cause for disharmony or confusion between the two, truthfulness bows to nonviolence. First and foremost, do no harm. Non-stealing. The third jewel guides our attempts and tendencies to look outward for satisfaction. Often, our dissatisfaction with ourselves and our lives leads us to this outward gaze. With a tendency to steal what is not rightfully ours, we steal from the earth, we steal from others, and we steal from ourselves. We steal from our own opportunity to grow ourselves into the person who has the right to have the life they want. Non-excess. The fourth jewel has been interpreted by many to mean celibacy or abstinence. Although this could certainly be one interpretation of non-excess, its literal meaning is, quote, walking with God. Whatever your beliefs about the divine, this tenet implies an awareness of sacredness in all our actions and an attentiveness to each moment that moves us into a stance of holiness. From this place of sacredness, the boundary is set to leave ex ex excess behind and live within the limits of enough. If we have been practicing non-stealing, we will automatically find ourselves primed to practice this guideline. Non-possessiveness. The fifth jewel and last of the guidelines, known as the yamas, liberates us from greed. It reminds us that clinging to people and material objects only weighs us down and makes life a heavy and disappointing experience. When we practice letting go, we move ourselves towards freedom and an enjoyment of life that is expansive and fresh. If we have begun to live the first five jewels well, we may notice that our time is freeing up and there is more breathing space in our lives. The days begin to feel a little lighter and easier. Work is more enjoyable and our relationships with others are a little smoother. We like ourselves a little more. There is a lighter gait to our step we realize that we need less than we previously thought. We are having more fun. As we begin our study of the final five jewels or niyamas, we move into a more subtle realm and into an interior, interior resting place, a place that becomes like Sabbath for us. Purity, the sixth jewel, is an invitation to cleanse our bodies, our attitudes, and our actions. It asks us to clean up our act so we can be more available to the qualities in life that we are seeking. This precept also invites us to purify how we, how we relate to what is uppermost in the moment. It is the quality of being aligned in our relationship with others, with the task at hand, and with ourselves. Contentment. The seventh jewel cannot be sought. All the things we do to bring fulfillment to ourselves actually interfere with our own satisfaction and well-being. Contentment can only be found in acceptance and appreciation of what is in the moment. 
The more we learn to leave what is alone, the more contentment we will quietly, the more contentment will quietly and steadily find us. Self-discipline. The eighth jewel literally means heat and can also be translated as catharsis or austerities. It is anything which impacts us to change. Change makes us spiritual heavyweights in the game of life. It is preparation for our own greatness. We all know how easy it is to be a person of high character when things are going our way, but what about those times life deals us a dark card? Who are you in those moments? This guideline is an invitation to purposefully seek out refining your own strength of character, and it asks, can you trust the heat? Can you trust the path of change itself? Self-study. The ninth jewel is a pursuit of knowing ourselves, studying what drives us and what shapes us because these things literally are the cause of the lives we are living. Self-study asks us to look at the stories we tell ourselves about ourselves and realize that these stories create the reality of our lives. Ultimately, this tenet invites us to release the false and limiting self-perception our ego has imposed on us and know the truth of our divine self. Surrender. The tenth jewel reminds us that life knows what to do better than we do. Through devotion, trust, and active engagement, we can receive each moment with an open heart. Rather than paddling upstream, surrender is an invitation to go with the underlying current. Enjoy the ride and take in the view. In this book, each yama and niyama has been given its own chapter in which the philosophy of the guideline is woven with practical examples and stories. At the end of the chapter, I've included a list of questions as a guide for reflection. I encourage you to journal and or form a study group to help deepen your commitment to your learning and to yourself. next time we will begin with the first yama, ahimsa or nonviolence. And until then, if you're finding interest in this and it speaks to you, then take a few moments to kind of think, think it over. You can review the video. You can always leave a comment. And um, until next time, I hope that you are taking care of yourself, you are taking care of those you love, and be well. Namaste.